Hey, with all the recent events with the hit regs and hitboxes and all the technical issues of the game, I thought it would be a good idea to make a video explaining the netcode and how it works. Update rates, rates, interpolation, lag compensation, tick rates, all these words are technical, but related to the netcode and how the game works. You might be searching for information on how to set up your game, which rate to choose, or maybe you don't even know what the rate is. Well, you've come to the right video. I'm gonna explain you what are these comments, how do they work, and what's the best way to use them. Oh my god! Production. So let's start by the beginning by defining what's a tick rate. Tick rate is a value that defines how many times per second a server refreshes the virtual world it's hosting. In a matchmaking, you play on 64 tick servers, which means the server simulates 64 times per second everyone's positions, health, amos, and all the stuff happening on the server. Pro players on LAN or leagues on the internet such as Faceit or ESL offers 128 tick, which is the double. Concretely, there is less difference between what you, the client, and the server sees. Sometimes you think you were right on his body before hitting the shot, but since the server didn't see it that way, your shots failed. And in some occasions, it might save a round or even the whole game. What a kill! Kerrigan should not have put that! He gets the second! Kenny S clutches the round! Oh my lord! So, how to set up your game, which commands are useful, and what are they doing? I will put some timestamp in the description if you want to switch between. And let's start with the rate. It defines the limit of data that you can exchange with the server. If a server sends you more than what your connection can handle, it's bad, because some information will be lost between you and the server, and of course, it will affect your game. You may not hear gunshot, footsteps, bombs, and even in some extreme case, you may not see some smokes. In theory, the higher, the better, of course. Open console and type rate 128k. Let's talk about CL update rate. If set to X, it will say to the server, hey, send me X time per second an update of the world, which is basically what their server knows, such as the player positions, or are they crouching or not, are they standing still, etc. There's two rules that you have to know. First, the server can never send you more update of the world than what he refreshes itself. It can't send you 128 update per second if it only simulates 64. And second, it cannot send you more data than your rate value. The best thing to do is to stick the CL update rate to the tick rate of the server you are playing on, which means on matchmaking you have to use CL update rate 64. The third command you have to know is CL CMD rate. If set to X, it will say to the server, hey, I will send you X time per second an update of my input, which is everything that's happening on your game, the keys you've pressed, are you shooting, etc. There's technically not any limit on the client side to that command, but it's absolutely pointless to send more updates than the tick rate value of the server. So just like the update rate, stick the CL CMD rate to the tick rate value of the server. And now the things are getting really interesting. The following one is introducing others' really important concept and commands. CL interpolate. Set to 1, it activates the interpolation. Set to 0, it deactivates it. The only value to set here is 1, nothing else. You don't have any reason to deactivate the interpolation. Oh yeah, what's the interpolation? Alright. The interpolation is defined by the command CL interp. So it's a bit complicated, but you've made it so far, so you should keep watching this because it's really interesting. Keep it up. There is a lot of different mechanisms used by Source Engine to provide a better gaming sensation, which is highly impacted by the fluidity of the models. If the models in the world were only rendered at the positions received by the server, every moving object animations or models would look choppy and jittery. Packet loss would also cause a lot of glitches. The trick used by Valve to solve this problem is to go back in time to render the position on the clients and always keep two unrendered tick in advance. Which means, what you see on the screen is actually technically the past. You're technically playing in the past. In other words, to server send to the client 128 ticks of information, the client is programmed to render a few ticks behind, however. So what you see on your screen isn't completely accurate to what's happening on the server in real time because what you are seeing is actually a few ticks behind. And like I said before, it's because if it uses the very last tick received, every animation will look choppy and the game will be horrible. The problem with that command is that it's a bit complicated to figure out which value fits which server. Here's some maths, bad up tight. So, a value of CL interp 0.1 means your game displays the data received 100 milliseconds before the last data received. 
So that's what we've seen before. This value works only with a CL update rate set to 20 and here's why. Update rate 20 makes you receiving 20 times per second, which is 20 times per 1000 milliseconds equals 50 milliseconds per tick. So with CL interrupt set to 0.1, your client goes back in time of 100 milliseconds, which makes it going back 2 tick in the past to render the positions, 50 plus 50. And it's only in that perfect configuration that the interpolation works perfectly. So technically, you will have to adapt the CL interp to the CL update rate. But you know, it's on internet between a lot of different computers, servers, firewalls, softwares. So there is a lot of things that can interfere and cause irregularity. And those were so annoying that Valve made another command, CL interp ratio. Now that you know why the interpolation is so important, you also have to know that an interpolation wrongly set causes troubles too. That's where the interp ratio comes in. Without going too far in the technical details, the interp ratio is here to simplify the things. It calculates how many times worth a tick and makes the rendering two ticks before the last received update if set up to two. Instead of calculating the time in second to go back in time of two updates from the server, you just indicate the number of the updates you want to keep before the render and interp ratio does the rest. So it's important, make sure CL interp ratio is set up to two and if you still have some loss trade 3 or 4. And at this point, you might be thinking that the less interpolation you have, the better it is. But nope. nope, because of the lag compensation. Between the representation of the word you have on your screen and the actual version of the same word that the server is processing, there is a huge difference. But since the server knows the interpolation and the ping of each player, the server takes care of the difference between each one. You sometimes will have the feeling that you were definitely not on the model while hitting the shot, and that's why there is some lag compensation. By the way, when you're spectating, there's not any lag compensation. That's why sometimes you're watching your friends playing and you will like, oh my god, you were so not on his body, but it's only because there's not any lag compensation in the spectate mode. So it basically works like that. Command execution time equals the current server time minus the packet latency minus the client's view interpolation, which means the server takes care of the differences of everyone and try to make it more fair. There is a difference between the time when the server received the information, which is the real time, and the time when the same information happened in the game, which is a simulated time. The server calculates the simulated time from the real time, taking care of the ping and the interpolation of every player. It's an important one and you need to set it up to one if it's not already. And if you are still around, here is the last one, it's CL predict. It's another mechanism used by Valve to improve the game sensation. If the value is set to 1, your client will extrapolate your position between the ticks instead of waiting on the response of the server. For example, if you have a ping of 100 and your CL predict is set to 0, there will be at the very least 100 milliseconds of delay between the time where you want to go forward and the time when the server allows you to do so. It's of course a game-breaking delay and it's getting worse with higher latency. Is. So make sure CL predict is set to 1. Great, so now you know what commands are useful, how to use them, and you've been introduced into the wonderful technical side of CSGO. If you want a recap of all the commands, check in description, and I will give you rendezvous for episode 2 where I will explain some facts related to those commands. Thanks for watching, let me know if you want more of those technical videos, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, <laughs>